Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be doing a kind of get ready with me, creating this look, playing around with some new drugstore makeup that I recently picked up. I don't feature drugstore makeup too much on my channel, but I actually really do love drugstore makeup. I just tend to feature my luxury products more because I spend more money on them, but I did want to take a moment to just kind of play around and show you that you can get a pretty look using drugstore, and I've just been curious about a lot of the new products. Now, I would recommend that you check out my video that I filmed previously to this where I haul all of the new makeup that I bought, and this is just me picking and choosing products that I wanted to really play with and put on my face. I still have a lot that I didn't try, but make sure you check out that video. So if you want to see how I got this look and what products I used, then just keep watching. So on my face right now, I only have moisturizer on, so I am starting off with a pretty clean canvas. And for primer today, I'm going to try the new e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Now this isn't a new new primer, but it's new to me. I know it's supposed to be like the Tatcha Canvas Silk. However, I'm actually like, I couldn't get into that and I would go back and retry it if I could, but I did get rid of it. But I felt the need to give something of the same nature a try and this was much sheer. So I got the Universal Sheer Shade and this is the original. So I'm just gonna rub my fingers through and we're gonna put this right here. It's been a really Really long time since I used the Tatcha canvas silk. That's why I want to try it again. I need to know what I'm missing out on. Oof. When you really dig in there and warm up the product, it starts to get messy. Also, I feel like I've been noticing my pores more lately, so maybe now I will understand more. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that in my T-zone. Obviously, my face gets red when I rub it. My skin feels nice, and that actually was kind of hydrating. So, so far, like that feels good. Now in this haul, I picked up three different foundations, but the one I'm most interested in trying today is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. This is the dewy version. Now my opinions on the matte version or the original, I guess, I did not like that foundation. I thought that it looked good in photography so i would use it for my makeup looks on instagram but that's it i felt like in person it just looked really thick and cakey and i didn't like how it looked in person so i ended up decluttering it so i love dewy foundations i have more normal to dry skin so this is the shade soft beige by the way looks like it might be a touch too light but it's gonna be a decent color a little bit yellow. I like the applicator. I know people are like, it's unsanitary, which I mean, it is, but whatever. As long as you're only using it on yourself. So it um, looks like I'm getting a pretty light coverage with this foundation on initial blend. So just with what I did, pretty light coverage. See if I can build it up. It feels like it's a pretty watery foundation. So yeah, I'm not really getting too much build on this coverage. So I think I'm gonna stop there. So the finish itself looks pretty nice. I wouldn't say I'm loving how this foundation is looking. I feel like it doesn't have too much coverage, which is fine. I don't care about a light coverage, but for some reason I thought it would have more because the matte one definitely had more. And I feel like the more I kind of dab, it almost takes off the product. So I don't know if that needs to settle down or, but I don't think it looks bad. Like it looks decent. We'll see how I feel as it kind of settles into the skin more. We're gonna move on to the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I got mine in the shade Medium Sand, which might be a bit dark on me, but I don't really like concealers that are too light. And again, this is a hydrating or more dewy version of their original. And I own the original, but I never really got too much use out of it. Yeah, this one might be like a shade darker than I normally prefer, but. This could be good for spot concealing. That kind of blended out really, really nice. It's a little bit more thick as well, which I like. I'm gonna put some on my nose because this foundation does not seem to want to stick to my nose for some reason. I don't know, I don't know about that foundation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go off camera, I'm gonna quickly do my eyebrows, and then I'm gonna set my face with the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Setting Powder. That's one of my favorite drugstore setting powders. Honestly, one of my favorite powders of all time. It just happens to be from the drugstore, and I'll be back. So I'm back, I filled in my eyebrows, and I actually used the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contour Stick in Oaks on You, just as kind of a cream contour. It's a pretty good cream contour if you're looking for something from the drugstore. This particular 
particular shade it's a bit warm but I kind of like that so now I want to move on to eyes so I actually have quite a few palettes to play around with this is going to be a super hard choice because I have this Milani palette I have three of these little bite-sized elf palettes physician formula this palette is beautiful and then I have these hmm. I can't help myself. I need to play with this Milani palette. This is the Milani Most Wanted Eyeshadow Palette in Outlaw Olive. Y'all know how I am about greens. I'm super duper excited to play around with that. So I'm going to put just a little bit more concealer on. And side note, I'm not really loving the look of this foundation. I can really see the redness through my cheeks. And I don't know, something about it just seems uneven as far as coverage goes. But of course, this is a first impression, so I have to continue playing around with that foundation but eyelids are ready so what eye brushes are we gonna use today I'm gonna start off with this this blinged brush e12 I'm going to quickly go into this light shade right here now I will say I'm not a big drugstore eyeshadow person it's pretty rare that I pick up drugstore eyeshadows unless it's ColourPop and these have the same texture of drugstore eyeshadows that I don't really like but maybe these will surprise me but I just use that to kind of set underneath the brow and now we're going to start off with this color right here I have to say there is no like really good transition shades it's like kind of dark so maybe it'll apply lightly no it's not this is quite brown and pigmented okay so we're gonna start working this it's actually blending quite easily okay gotta admit not sure if that just blended really good or if it just blended away. Um, as you can see, there's not too much color down, but that was very, very easy. So we're going to go into this darker green shade right here since this is an olive palette. And I'm not getting too much fallout, but I also am very light-handed when it comes to makeup. Ooh, I'm liking this. Probably should have picked a different color shirt if I was going to use this palette. Probably should have used a smaller brush too. This is getting muddy. Okay, so now that I've laid this color down, I'm going to go in with a little bit more of a precise brush. This is the Refer number one brush. I'm going to try and blend this out a bit more precise. So something is not exactly happening that I love. So when you blend out this shadow, I don't know if you can see, but it kind of turns a little bit gray. And then over here, we do have a little bit of unevenness. But honestly though, like it's not bad. I'm pretty biased when it comes to drugstore shadows. I just don't really like them, so I don't think this is doing a bad job. But I am extra picky when it comes to eyeshadows, so this might just be a me problem. I mean, it's not a perfect blend, and it's not the most amazing eyeshadow in the world, but it got the job done, and the green is holding decently, so I'm not mad at it. So now we're gonna play with these colors right here. So I'm gonna start off with this color. Don't really love how it feels by swatch, but I haven't even swatched these on the arm. Just gonna press this down right here. Ooh, that's actually super pretty. The only thing I would worry about with this shadow just kind of feeling the texture is maybe wear time or fallout throughout the day of these shimmers. Gotta admit though, that's really pretty. Okay, now we're gonna do this color right here. This is like the standout shade in this palette. Ooh. I think I'm being too hard on this palette. For drugstore, pretty impressed actually. So I feel like if I used this wet, as far as the shimmers go, that is when this palette would really stand out. But I'm a huge proponent of like not needing to wet the shadows to make them good. That they should just be good on their own, but this I'm not mad at. I'm really not. Just to give this shadow a shot, I'm just gonna put that right here. This shade's a little bit more gold. And I'm going to kind of build up this crease a little bit for some smokiness. One thing I can kind of tell that you need to be careful about with these shadows is building and blending them too much because they can kind of blend away. So just be careful with that. But if you use a light hand with application and you're very gentle and you take your time, you're not just throwing it on. This is actually not a bad palette from the drugstore and the colors that they offer are really pretty. This one, Outlaw Olive, I'm really liking. Now, I think wear time may be an issue with it, just kind of feeling the formula, but we're gonna move on to the rest of the face. So I have a couple cream blush options. They're both very, very pink, which I don't think is exactly flattering for this look. Maybe we won't use cream blush. We're gonna use powder blush and a cream highlighter. 
because those cream blushes just don't match. Before I put down the powder blush, I'm gonna try this Flower Beauty Day Glow Highlighting Glaze. Don't really love how this feels. It feels a little bit sticky, but I wanna give it a try. A little bit too thick and sticky for my liking. I thought this was something else when I was ordering it. I don't know what I thought it was, but I did not realize it would be this texture, but I'm just gonna place that with my sponge right here. Huh, that's actually really nice subtle glow if you're just using a sponge. I'm very picky about cream highlighters, meaning I don't really like cream highlighters ever. It's just not my preferred medium when it comes to highlighters, but you know, when you apply this with a sponge, which I think a sponge is always the best way to apply most cream product, this is pretty. I don't notice it picking up the foundation. I definitely want to set this with a powder. It does feel a bit sticky on the face, but that's actually really pretty and it's not picking up my foundation either. If you like using cream products on your face, maybe give this one a try. It's actually kind of really pretty, super natural looking. Kind of impressed by that. I have a few powder blushes to mess around with, but I think I'm gonna use this new All May one. I've used this one before and I really liked it, so I wanted to share it with you. This is the All May Health the Hue Blush in Nearly Nude. They had a few shades and I thought the shades were really, really pretty and this is just gonna go really great with the eye look. All May rarely impresses me, but do you see how pretty that is? And it has like a very subtle sheen to it that's just incredible. Honestly, I have a little bit of a pink blush left over on this, so kind of messed that up for you guys, but Overall, you can see it's like a super pretty color. I love this blush. This is a really good one from the drugstore. Definitely a hit there. Highlighter as well. I have this Revlon one, this Milani one. Let's play with the Revlon one. I haven't used Revlon in this video yet. So this is the Skin Lights Highlighter from Revlon in Daybreak Glimmer. And I mean, this whole release collection that they've had is super, super attractive to me. How could I not try it? So I'm using my F17 brush from Blink Brushes. And I love that it's like that gelée formula. And I mean, to be honest, this is probably gonna stick very well because of that cream highlighter. Yeah. See, that's why I don't like the texture of this cream highlighter because I feel like it's too sticky on the face. The finish was pretty. It's a bit sticky. I feel like I can't blend this highlighter, but dang, that highlighter is really pretty. I'm gonna try and work that into the skin. I think the drugstore does a really good job with highlighters. You can find some really, really nice ones. Right here. So this is a good one if you're interested. It's very, very pretty. All right, so let's move on to mascara. I don't have a new, new mascara, but I have one that's new to me. It takes me a while to get to know a mascara formula and my real thoughts on it. So lately I've been testing out the Essence What the Fate Volumizing and Lengthening Mascara, and I've been loving Essence mascaras. So I was super excited to try this one. I'm gonna go off frame for this, so just bear with me. And this is what the wand looks like. I really like it because I have very short lashes. So I'm gonna go off frame so I can really be accurate with this. Okay, so overall, I think this is a decent mascara. I think it's quite lengthening and it does a decent job at separating. I don't notice too much volumizing with it. I love the wand on this, but other than that, I think Lash Princess is still the best mascara from Essence, but this isn't a bad one, but I've definitely used better. So I don't actually have any lip products, so I'm just gonna go off camera, throw on a lip that I think that looks good, change out my laundry, and I'll be back with the final look. All right, so I'm back. Back. Here is the final look. I really think it all came together really pretty. I'm wearing on my lips the Almar Cosmetic Dulce Lip Liner and the Morphe Lipstick in Flirt. Anything else that you're curious about, it will be linked down in the description box. But let's quickly do my final roundup of the products that I used today. For the Poreless Putty Primer, I probably should have used this on only half my face so I could tell a difference. So I'm gonna <laughs> need to keep you guys updated on that. But honestly, I really liked how moisturizing it felt on my skin. It just felt like it was really doing something. So I think I like this, but I definitely need to do some more comparisons. The Wet n Wild Dewy Photo Focus Foundation. I think it applied a little bit patchy to my skin. I'm honestly not that crazy about it. I definitely am going to need to play around with it some more, but thus far, first impressions, not too impressed. Now we have the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I think it might look a little bit thick under my eyes, a little bit more thicker than I prefer, but it does look natural at the same time. 
very confusing statement I just made. And I can kind of see some darkness still. I'm not fully on board with this concealer, but I don't think it's a bad one. Like, it looks pretty decent, but it's one of those things where I feel like I need to wear this concealer without any eyeshadow so I can really see how it's handling my lines because I do have such dark, smoked-out shadow that any concealer would look good if I have shadow covering it. I gotta admit, pleasant surprise with the Flower Day Glow Highlighting Glaze. Now, I can definitely see some people not liking this. It is a little bit more sticky and I wouldn't say it necessarily sets down. I think putting powder on top of it made it difficult but it also made it feel better on my skin and the highlighter is probably going to last longer now but I actually feel like this looked super natural on my skin so I think if you wear like tinted moisturizer and then use a sponge to kind of pat this on you are going to get a really pretty natural glow but if texture and stickiness is a thing for you you're not going to like this. This isn't for everybody but it didn't pick up my foundation and it looked really good so I didn't even really mean to pick this up but I'm not mad at it. The All May Healthy Hue Blush Blush. I've been loving this blush. I'm so surprised that I've been loving this All May product so much, but it's such a good blush and I can tell it's a good formula as well. So there are some high-end blushes that I have that don't show up when I just wear powder foundation and this blush actually shows up when I'm wearing just powder foundation because sometimes those powder blushes need something to stick to. So I think a really good formula doesn't need that base. So this goes right on top of powder foundation with ease. So I've honestly been using this a lot lately. The Revlon skin lights highlighter I also think is really nice very pretty I don't think it's like a groundbreaking highlighter but it's very appealing to the eye and it does work really well and I really love the glow that it gives now it could be just the combination of this and the day glow so I will have to try this on its own to see what it can really do it does seem a little bit subtle but it's not glittery or chunky at all and it's quite smooth on the face so I'm liking this as well. And then the Milani Outlaw Olive Eyeshadow Palette. It's not the best eyeshadow palette that I've ever used, but I did get a really pretty end product. Like, it's a gorgeous look that I managed to make with this palette, but I definitely think you need to have some patience, and I need to update you on wear time because I am worried about that. Just coming from reviewing Natasha Denona Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows on the regular, it's a pretty hard adjustment to go to this. But I mean, for the price, like, this is super pretty. I'm just personally not a fan of drugstore eyeshadows and this does have drugstore eyeshadow tendencies that I don't really care for but you can still get a really pretty look especially if you just want something with these colors and you don't want to spend a lot of money like this is a great way to go finally the essence what the fake mascara is an okay mascara if you're gonna go with essence definitely pick up their lash princess mascara but still it's okay <laughs> so anyways that is me trying out all this new makeup make sure you check out my drugstore haul to see all of the other stuff that I picked up, but I wanted to do a separate video showing you this look and showing you that you can get pretty makeup at drugstore. So that is all I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, I hope you take the time to do so, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one.